gonna talk about ZK P2P and our journey from productionizing a ZK application. I'm Richard, I'm Richard and this is Sachin, and we're a part of the ZK P2P team. Woo. Ooh, let's go. Yeah, so brief intro. Uh, we previously built DeFi index products at Set Protocol, and now we're exploring <laughs> Web2 data provenance apps uh, using ZK. And currently, we're building ZK P2P, uh, which is a trustless fiat to crypto on ramp. We're funded entirely through grants by PSE and the Ethereum Foundation, and all our code is open source from day one and a public good. Okay, now uh, recall Planck takes a polynomial IOP and a PCS, and you do some stuff, mix it together. Just kidding. Um, this is a talk about ZK applications. Uh, we're not gonna talk about polynomial IOPs or PCSs or any of that. Instead, we'll talk about hard crypto problems, ZK primitives for data provenance, and how those two things can be mixed together to create really cool ZK applications. Uh, yeah, so we'll start really quick, talk a little bit about hard crypto problems. As people might be familiar here, uh, we like to say that Ethereum is an infinite garden, but the problem today, it's heavily guarded. Um, it's really difficult to get inside because you have to get past some of these uh, trusted intermediaries in order to bring your assets onto Ethereum. This isn't ideal. Um, so to unwrap crypto today, um, like the problems are it's not, not globally inclusive, it's, oh, there's high fees for direct on-ramping, uh, charging up to 5%. There's complex KYC processes. There's multiple transactions, and there's sources of delays. And lastly, it's not composable with the rest of DeFi or the rest of the ecosystem. Cool. Yeah, now that we've discussed one of the components that is that goes into building a cool ZK app. Let's discuss the next one, which is ZK primitives for data provenance. Yeah. yeah so as we all know, there's exabytes of data in Web2 that can be brought on chain uh, and proved in smart contracts to do a bunch of cool stuff. And ZK allows us to do exactly that without trusting any centralized intermediaries. You only have to trust the math done by Dan Bonet and others. Uh, the two properties that of ZK that finally allow us to perform Web3 ex Web execution on Web2 data is compression, which unlocks unlimited off-chain compute. This means we can do complex computations like RSS signature verification that was too expensive to do on-chain previously. And the second is selective disclosure, which is to redact all your sensitive data before posting it on-chain, which enables privacy. Uh, but obviously, writing circuits for provenant data-based apps is hard and time-consuming. But you need not do that, thanks to PSC and other teams out there, which have built primitives that you can use. Uh, namely, ZK email, TLS Notary, Chainlink, Reclaim Protocol. Uh, each of them have their own security and trust assumptions. And if none of them satisfy your needs, you can always build your own primitive. For example, ZK Certs, which is like another work-in-progress project by us. Among all the existing primitives, we think ZK email is the most exciting one. Uh, I'll go over why in the next slide. But before that, a quick primer on ZK email. So ZK email allows you to verify DKM signatures embedded inside emails. The signature is an RSA signature which signs on the from, the to, and the body of the email using the domain key. Uh, you also have ZK regex to selectively disclose and make statements about the contents of the email. If you, want to, if you want to dive deeper into ZK email, check out the talk that the ZK email team gave yesterday. So why ZK email? Uh, because of three reasons. First, it has the best UX today. It is non-interactive, there's no MPC stuff going on in the backend, and no additional trust assumptions. Second, it is production ready. It has been audited twice, and multiple teams are contributing to it. And finally, emails are the most widely adopted data standard in Web2. DKM is used to sign the 350 billion emails sent daily, including confirmation emails uh, by payment platforms around the world. 
Okay, cool. So now we talked about hard crypto problems and ZK primitives for data provenance. You can kind of just blend them together and create cool ZK apps. And that's kind of exactly what we did. So our hard crypto problem was on-ramping crypto. Uh, we used a couple ZK primitives, such as ZK email or ZK regex, using CIRCOM to build the circuits. And then we've created ZK P2P as a result. So our solution with ZK P2P allows you to on-ramp to crypto without trusting anyone. Uh, it's a first trust mi minimized crypto, fiat to crypto on-ramp that's fast, cheap, permissionless. It's fast because there's no additional KYC required. We borrow the KYC directly by proving you're a Venmo user. It's cheap because it's peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, which allows the market to dictate rates uh, in the protocol. And lastly, it's permissionless. It's composable with the rest of DeFi, so you can atomically like, create actions um, with on-ramping USD. And right now, it's permissionlessly integrated with Venmo, which is a popular P2P uh, payment platform in the US. OK, so um, instead of talking about, at, at a high level, how it works, I'll just go through a demo and show you guys. All right, there's supposed to be a video. Uh. Trust us. <laughs> Oh, maybe it doesn't autoplay. Huh. Is it not autoplay? Oh, whoops. No. Uh, did it work? There's no video? No. no. Um, did it start? Oh, yeah. Let's just go back to the original. Let's start again. Let's go back to the beginning. Go back to the previous slide and come back. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, let's play it. Yeah, so at a high level, um, I'm an on-ramper. I come to the website. I want to convert my USD to USDC. Uh, I start by claiming the order from a peer who has already deposited some liquidity um, on-chain. And this is required to prevent any kind of race conditions if two people want to claim the same liquidity on the protocol. Uh, I'll next, uh, once claimed, I'll send the Venmo payment off-chain um, which, which, oh, to, the, to the user, uh, to the depositor. And this, you, by simply scanning the QR code and sending the payment off-chain. And once the payment is sent, you can click, I've clicked complete payment, and I can Google auth into my Gmail in order to streamline the flow of selecting the correct um, payment email. So in this case, uh, I've paid this guy a dollar and five cents, and I send, click verify, and this essentially uploads the email to a remote proving server, uh, which generates the gross 16 proof in the back end that I've paid someone a dollar and five cents. Uh, the whole process should take 20 seconds using RapidSnark server side. And this is because our circuits are pretty big, around 7.5 to 7.8 million constraints. And there's an alternative for you to do it browser side, which will take 10 to 15 minutes locally. So once the order has been completed, uh, the, or the proof has been generated, it'll be sent back to the user, which can submit it on chain. And here you can see that uh, the user has success successfully proven their Venmo payment and claimed one USDC on base. Yeah, hopefully the demo scored well on some of the UX parameters that the previous speaker mentioned. Cool, now that we have... 
Next, let's dive very quickly into the mix grinder, which is the design and engineering grind that goes on behind the scenes, which takes these two components and outputs a cool ZK app. Uh, the first obvious choice that you have to make while you're building a provenant database ZK app is your proving stack. And you have too many choices at the moment, and each of them have their own different UX and DevX side effects. Uh, you're also dependent on the proving stack of the ZK primitive that you are building on top of. For us, ZKML had both Circom and Halo 2 implementations, but we ultimately chose to go ahead with Circom. Why Circom? Because privacy is not critical to the on-ramping workflow, which means we can send the email to a server and for server-side proof generation, which is a much, much better UX compared to client-side proof generation. We are able to perform C witness gen and proving using rapid snark all in 20 seconds, which is very fast given that our circuits are pretty huge with 7.8 million constraints. Also, the ZKM's email circum implementation is much mature, more mature compared to the Halo team implementation, which is true for other circum implementations as well. Although in future, we do plan to support client-side proving using Halo 2 to offer privacy-preserving proving as well. Let's also quickly dive into some of the security considerations that you need to keep in mind while you're building provenant database apps. The first one is injection attacks. Uh, if you're building on top of emails using ZK regex, uh, you should make sure to prevent custom string injection attacks. In our case, Venmo allows the user to specify a custom note while sending a payment, which means the user can inject custom malicious string into the body of the email. Uh, the mitigation here is to increase the regex string to be longer than the custom message length. Additionally, you can also put in guardrails uh, in, in the smart contract. And the guardrails work because you get civil resistance for free when we're building on top of Web2. Reversible transactions, especially relevant when you're building payment applications uh, which are built on Web2 payment platforms. So unlike Ethereum, Web2 transactions are not immutable, which means uh, in ZKP2P, the user could on-ramp, pay the off-ramp or on Venmo, claim the USDC, but then reverse the transaction and keep the, both the USD and the USDC. Uh, this is unfortunately a big problem and still in R&D right now. And we think uh, the solution for this would be a crypto economic solution rather than a cryptographic solution. Uh, again, you can put guardrails in place for max dollar amounts and cooldown period to disincentivize the user from doing such malicious behavior. Uh, there are other potential attacks as well, such as repl replay attacks, man in the middle attack, especially when you're doing server side proving, race conditions, mail server attacks, MEV and front running. I've discussed those in my, like, I talked about those in my previous ZK10 talk, as well as the ZK mail team have talked about those, so you can check those talks out. Cool, we're done with the technical overview. Now, finally, as we promised earlier, we are launching the ZK P2P alpha version today. All right, so ZKP2P is live on base. Try it out now. Um, you can send the QR code uh, or go to zkp2p.xyz. Currently, we only support desktop, though. So um, yeah, please do that. If you're a Venmo user, please try it out. Uh, there are currently some guardrails in place, uh, such as $250 order per six hours uh, for our alpha launch. And yeah, I've just added two quests for you guys uh, to complete. Um, quest one is, um, Please bridge ETH to base and complete the registration flow to prove that you're a unique Venmo user. There may be, it may or may not be an N NFT coming soon on this. And Quest 2, uh, on-ramp your USD to USDC. There's liquidity there that you, for you guys to take. And oops. yeah, we have some future work as well. Um, there's l still a lot of things to do. Uh, mainly want to focus on coverage and safety. Uh, increase coverage by allowing more payment providers from other countries, uh, India, China, EU, et cetera. And also to reduce all of the attack uh, vectors that Sachin kind of mentioned a little bit earlier and be able to raise limits uh, for transactions. And yeah, just make the protocol safer to handle larger amounts. And yeah, that's it. Uh, special thanks to PSE for uh, grant funding and also ZK email for all the collaboration on our circuits.
So let's connect um, our Twitters there and check out our docs. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. I think we have time for one short question. Uh, sure. Uh, I can give you my back. Thanks for your presentation. Uh, I wanted to ask, how long is the period for sending the money from Venmo to, like, to the user that sells us uh, crypto? Like, um, is it possible to do a griefing attack or something? Thank you. Um, Venmo transactions are immediate. I'm not sure whether they're settled immediately or not. It's signal um, also, griefing is not possible. So when the off-ramper deposits liquidity and the on-ramper uh, takes the liquidity, they are supposed to signal an intent first before they take the liquidity. And if they, if they not end up not completing the transaction, not going through the Venmo flow, and not doing the off-chain transaction, then we have a uh, we have permissions set up in our smart contract so that the off-ramper could block the user for f from further, from signaling intents uh, later on. Okay, so thank you very much, guys. A big round of applause for them.